Hi, I'm Irma Francis, and I'd like to share a little bit about what has inspired me to do the work that I do. At a very young age, I had what I would call a soul awakening, where there was a realization that I have a human self, and I also have a divine self. And it was from this awakening that um, I began my life. This awakening happened at um, around seven or eight years old. And I became increasingly confused as to why there was so much pain and suffering in the world. Because I had made an innocent assumption that everyone had this kind of um, awakening. I didn't even know it was an awakening. I just was awake. And um, so I couldn't understand why there was so much pain and suffering in the world because from the level of soul, or, or I would rather say from the awareness of soul, um, we, we live from a place of, of unconditional love with, without fear and life is full of bliss and joy and peace and harmony and um, it's it, it's perfection of, of the the soul um, totally open and whole and um, not needing anything just just an awareness that we're we're on this earth to explore and have an adventure of the human experience. And a lot of those things I, I couldn't put into, um, I, I couldn't communicate it. I just was it. And unfortunately, um, through that innocent assumption that everyone had this awakening, I um, invited into my experience um, a lot of, um, people that kind of were pulling me down into lower vibrations of of what life is about, the human condition. And it, it's nobody's fault. It's um, most people develop a kind of soul amnesia and they forget. They forget their divine nature and... Um, they lose a connection to that that higher awareness that just leads us gracefully and, and blissfully through life. Um, so once I started discovering the, the limitations of, of mass consciousness, I, I uh, really didn't know what to do. Um, I really felt like I wasn't fitting into what was seen as normal and what was um, expected um, of me, um, that I fit into some kind of status quo of um, my family and society and um, whatever system I would find myself in, whether family, um, school system, of course, when I became an adult, um, my work life. And um, I just never gave up on finding a way to return to that, that soul awareness and, and live from that, that soul awareness. And um, eventually, after fulfilling all the expectations of adulthood, I finally had the courage to take the needed steps to return to that place of beingness, um, that unconditional love and beingness of soul awareness. And it's not about um, consuming or controlling or having agendas. It's about being open and receiving and, and giving love.
and there's nothing higher really on, on this earth and that doesn't diminish the human experience of you know our our five senses and and having this beautiful wonderful um, human experience, but when you um, disconnect from what I would call absolute truth, because we get so lost and absorbed into relative truth of of life, of the human experience. Um, we we start to think that 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 thing that feels like it's missing from us is something on the external and and we start to seek and desire and and try and fill up that that emptiness and we try and find it in the external but it it's not there it's not there it's inside of us and um that's what my work is is all about. I uh, started recording a lot of my um, awarenesses and experiences, and I realized a, a book of contemplation was taking form, and so I'm in the process of of working on that. Um, and the <clears throat> excuse me, the title of that book is called Soulhood the next stage in our evolution and I, I really believe that soulhood is is something that's attainable we think that adulthood well I don't want to assume that everyone thinks that adulthood is is the last stage of our evolutionary process um, I'll just say that I know that it isn't and there is another stage if throughout your life you haven't found a way to um, wake up to your soul and connect to that, that soul awareness, which a lot of us don't um, because we do feel a need to fulfill all those expectations of, of adulthood. Um, but what happened for me is... Um, when my sons were grown and off on their own and I had left uh, a job at a pharmaceutical company, I, um, I finally had the courage to do the, take the needed steps to return to that, that soul awareness. And I would say one of the biggest steps in that return to that unconditional love and beingness is forgiveness. It's forgiving ourselves and and others um, for not knowing what we we were doing. Um, because when we forget that, that connection to what I would call God, um, that, that higher source, um, we can do really hurtful things um, to each other and to ourselves. I, I think one of the best definitions I've heard of forgiveness is um, accepting that we can't change what happened. And that's, that's really um, what awakens us or reawakens us to what is, to what is right now. And that's all we really have is, is right now. And we can spend this right now moment in regret and resentment and holding on to the past anticipating the future, what's going to happen. We don't know. We don't know, do we? Um, there's such a, a great peace that comes 
with the acceptance of, of what is. And sometimes it can be hard to get to that place and to stay in that place um, because when something happens that makes us uncomfortable in, in some kind of way or um, we have a tendency to become victims or feel like a victim of something happening to us. But as long as we can align ourselves with with the truth of the only thing I really have control over is my own thoughts, feelings, and actions. And um, that's, that's very empowering. It's very empowering. And from this place of being present in this moment. You know, unless something's coming at you in, in some way trying to cause you harm, which there are those things in this life, but are they happening right now? In the stillness of this moment, We have love, we have peace, we have harmony, and we have presence. Uh, many, many years ago, I, I read a book by um, Marianne Williamson called A Return to Love. And, you know, that book really sums up a lot of, of what I'm trying to say <clears throat> in this video. So if you get a chance, read that book, um, because we can do that. We can return to love, and and not the love of you know, the romantic movies and you know codependent relationships, <clears throat> but an unconditional love, a love of beingness. <clears throat> But we're not trying to make anything happen. We're honoring ourselves and we're honoring the people that cross our paths. So that's a, a little bit about um, what I wanted to share and, and what inspired me to do the work that I do because The, the um, experiences that come with those higher dimensional awarenesses of, of what I call soulhood, um, it just makes all the human experiences of the five senses, it just uh, magnifies all that. It just brings space to all of that. And um, there's a great freedom in soulhood. You aren't trying to become something or someone anymore. Because the truth is you always were somebody. Somebody of worth, divine worth. So feel free to call me, um, email me. Contact me through my website. Um, and we can talk more and, and um, see what we have to share with each other about this thing called soulhood. So, in the meantime, may you live in the comfort and the light and the love of grace.